Hey guys, it's Nate here. Today I want to cover what a tricky interview question looks like by working through a real data science interview question by Facebook. Companies love to put these slight tricks or non-obvious solutions in their questions to really try to weed out candidates. But the thing is, these aren't really tricks. These are real scenarios and real edge cases that you as a data scientist would have to work with every day on the job. So those candidates with professional experience typically have an easier time finding other data science jobs because they've worked through and identified what these solutions are, what these edge cases and scenarios and tricks are. So they're better equipped to identify these scenarios in an interview. But those without professional experience trying to find their first job might find these questions tricky because they haven't seen these scenarios before and they don't know how to deal with it. So the goal is to upskill everyone through this content. The hope is at the end, you'll be able to identify these scenarios, whether on the job or on an interview. So let's get started. But before we get started, please subscribe to this channel if you like content like this. The content that I try to create is really aimed for the advanced beginner to intermediate data scientists, those that are preparing for their first data science job, or maybe have up to three to four years of data science experience. So really in the advanced beginner to intermediate stage here. All right, so this interview question is by Facebook. It's called highest energy consumption. The question reads, find the date with the highest total energy consumption from the Facebook data centers. Output the date along with the total energy consumption across all the data centers. All right, so the first thing we'll do is take a look at the underlying data because that's gonna inform our approach. Okay, so if I hit preview for the Facebook EU energy data set, I get two columns, date and consumption. So the date is essentially year, month, and day, and then this consumption looks like it's like kilowatt hours or something like that, but it doesn't really matter. If I go then to Asia, I get the same thing. Uh, but the first thing I notice is that there are more rows in the en Asia energy table than in the EU energy table, right? So we have six rows here in Asia and five rows in EU. And then in NA, which stands for North America, we have five rows. So this is already telling me that you cannot use a join to on these tables mainly because if you use an inner join, you're going to remove one of these rows from the output. And that's not what you want because you want to get the highest total energy consumption. And if you remove one of the dates, that date could actually have the highest energy consumption, right? So using an inner join isn't necessarily going to work. And so that is kind of one of the tricks that you need to identify in this problem because the obvious solution is really to join these three database tables together, right? So then the next obvious approach could be to use like an outer join, like a left join, but you have three tables and you don't actually know which one's the master table. So the third obvious solution could be a cross join, but that's actually kind of difficult because cross joins take a lot of computing resources. So it's not necessarily practical in a work setting to use a cross join off of like what could be billions and billions of rows worth of data. Um, it could work here because there are only seven rows, right? In the largest table. Um, and also second cross joins, it's a little bit complicated when you have three tables. So I wouldn't really even approach that way. So if you can't necessarily use a join, then the next best step is to actually use a union all because then you can just keep all the dates, keep all the consumptions, union all of them. So you're keeping all of the rows for all three of the tables and you have now have a list of dates and consumption across all of the Facebook data centers. So that's the approach we're gonna take here. There's another edge case and scenario that we need to solution for as well, but I'll bring that up when we get to it. So we understand the data, let's write out what the approach is gonna look like. So the first step, as I mentioned, is to create a list of dates and consumption values from all Facebook data centers using a union all. And of course we want a union all and not a union because we don't want to deduplicate any of our rows. A union all preserves the rows, a union will deduplicate rows. 
So now once we have a list of all of the dates and energy consumption from all three of the data centers, let's then total up all of the energy by date. So sum energy and group by date. So now we have a list of energy by date. We need to then identify the max energy consumption. So now the fourth step is what I was talking about. There is an additional edge case and scenario to build for in the solution. So you're trying to find the max energy and the date that corresponds to that max energy consumption. But what if there are two dates, right? There are two max values that are tied and you need to output two dates. How would you create a solution for that? Because most people would just do an order by energy consumption and then limit one and you get the highest energy consumption and you get one date. But if there are ties in that energy consumption, you're not gonna be able to output all of the dates. So to handle this scenario or edge case, because you've identified the max energy consumption already, you can then join that to step number two here, which is basically a table that has the sum of all of the energies by date. So when you join the two tables there, you get all of the dates that are tied for the max energy consumption. All right, join the max energy with energy consumption by date to find the date or dates of max energy. So now that we have the approach, let's start coding. So I'm gonna code the solution so that it's just, it works from the top to the bottom and I'm gonna create basically three CTEs, uh, one for each of these steps right here and then the last one will just be the regular select from to join these two tables together. I like to approach solutions this way, uh, both on the job and especially on interviews uh, because I get to step through the logic one by one uh, with the interviewer so that they can keep track of how I think and how I approach the solution. All right, so let's just start with the first step here, which is create a list of dates and energy consumptions from all three tables. So this is easy. It's really just going to be select star from, let's just do the EU energy table first. And then I'll just do a union all, select star from the second table, the Asia table, and then a union all, select star from the Facebook NA energy table. All right, so if we run this query here, we basically get a list of dates and consumption values for all three tables. So this looks right. So I'm gonna create a CTE called total energy. And so you see how easy this code is you're not necessarily being tested on how well you know advanced functions. It's really about how well you can design a solution that will be able to handle different edge cases and scenarios that are thrown your way. So the next step is to sum the energy and group by date. So all that really means is you're starting to see right here, uh, January 1st and then January 1st, uh, basically, these are energy values coming from two different data centers. You just want to collapse them together, group them by date, and then sum these values together here. Let's do a select, and then it'll go date, and then we want to do a sum consumption as total energy from our CTE called total energy, and then we need to group by date, and then what I'll do is I'll order by date uh, earliest to latest just to make things look nicer. So now we have a nice list of dates and total energies from all three data centers. I'm then going to create a CTE out of this query here. So let's call this energy by date. All right, so the next step is to identify the max energy consumption. So basically, if we just kind of eyeball it, the highest number is, are these two dates right here. So 1250 is going to be the max. So in order to actually output that, that should be really simple. Select max total energy from energy by date, my CTE, we get max equals 1250. So what I can also do is I'll just name this as max energy. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll create a third CTE. We'll call this max energy. So now the last step is really just putting everything together. Uh, putting energy by date and putting max energy together. 
Um, we want to join the max energy with energy consumption by date to find the dates of max energy. So we should actually get two dates in the output. So select date and total energy from, let's go max energy, and we'll alias that with an ME. Let's join that with the energy by date table. Let's call this EBD for energy by date. And let's join EBD, let's join their total energy and make that equal to the max energy we found in the max energy table. So if we run this, we should get two dates and we do. So let's check our solution. Our solution is correct. All right, so that's what I would consider a tricky question or a question that involves a non-obvious solution. The obvious solution was to use joins to join all three tables together. You couldn't really do that without losing data. You couldn't practically use a cross join because it takes a lot of computing power and resources. So it's not practical in the work setting. So the only other solution was to use a union all. And then we had to deal with the second scenario, which is not very obvious at all, because when most people think about max values, they think about ordering from highest to lowest and then limiting by one to just grab that max value. But there are so many scenarios out there where you will have multiple dates that are tied for the max value and you really need to be able to handle it. So interviewers are thinking about how you can think through problems if you can identify these edge cases and scenarios and if you can design solutions that will handle these scenarios. So it's a tricky problem, but it's very practical because as a data scientist or anyone in analytics, you deal with these scenarios every day in your work. So I hope that clears things up for you guys. I hope you're a little bit more knowledgeable. I hope you'll be able to identify these edge cases and scenarios in the future. And I hope you're a better data scientist because of it. So if you like this content, and you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks.